Happy Halloween, everyone, and welcome back to Vintage Gaming Memories. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below. It would only be appropriate to have today's video be Epoch's Dracula House. This game came out in 1982, and there were a couple different versions produced. The blood red one is simply called Dracula, and was sold in the United States. The yellow one I have here was sold in Japan and called Dracula House in Blood Red. Same game, but just different exterior. I did get this from an eBay seller located in Japan. It was in pretty decent condition, except for the white lettering on the control panel. As you can see here, the white lettering is pretty clear and very bright now, but that was because I had to paint over what was faded away. And that took a little bit of time because you needed to get a steady grip on the marker, which is a paint marker. And you, you needed a magnifying glass as well, just because you really want to stay on top of the raised lettering. It's definitely raised. So that's how it actually looks more popping or three-dimensional versus it just being a flat lettering. Um, but it does take a little bit of steady nerves to make sure you don't over paint it and have it drip off the side and look messy so that was one thing i had to do right away just to get it nice and clean speaking of clean i did utilize that favorite product of mine novus one so now everything has a nice shine to it even the plastic on the sides it wasn't quite like that it was a little bit well i guess scuffed up here and there especially on the main display itself which is a vfd display or vfd D is redundant. Uh, VFD is a vacuum fluorescent display. Now I've talked about this type of game with a VFD before in my Coleco 7 collection video. Be sure to check that out if you haven't done so already. Basically you're getting better quality with clarity and brightness with the VFD, but then the trade-off is the power consumption. And segue into that power consumption, for this game it takes four c size batteries or there is an option for an AC plug on the side. Let's take a closer look at this game. Now, as I mentioned, there's different versions. There's a red one that you're probably more familiar with or you might have seen. And then this is the Japan one, which I did get it from a eBay seller in Japan purposely. I wanted to get this version just to see the differences I don't have the red one in my possession yet. I will be trying to get that. There's no cracks on the plastic. Uh, it cleaned up really nice. The controller works perfect. The hammer button, that's what this is. You'll see when I have the battery in, there's no hesitation when you turn it on. Let's look at the battery compartment and you can see it's great condition. Nothing at all. No corrosion. I mean, I love this Novus One product. I know I keep talking about it, but it is just such a smooth feeling. This feels like it's brand new. It's it's uh, it's great feeling surface of this plastic when you use a polish like that. All right, well, enough of loving on the plastic here. Let's get a better understanding of the gameplay itself. So you're not Dracula in this game, but instead you're a treasure hunter looking for the hidden treasure in a coffin within Dracula's house. Now there is a few obstacles you have to avoid while you try to seek for that treasure. There is a wolfman. There's vampire bats that you must avoid while you navigate towards that coffin. And then when you get to the coffin, you have to correctly choose the right one. There's four different coffins that you'll see. And if you pick the wrong one, you'll get Dracula himself chasing after you instead of the treasure. There are four different skill levels in this game. The skill levels will vary in the number of wolfman or vampire bats you may encounter, as well as the number of chances or lives you get. The speed of the monsters will also increase as you complete each cycle, which is pretty much a completion of the level. And if I didn't also mention, there's even diamonds you have to gather as you go through a level. 
And then there's a cross that you have to, or you could utilize to help you when you get Dracula chasing after you. So there's a lot of stuff going on in this game, but let's just get right into it and then we can explain as we go. All right, let's give this game a try. I have the batteries in, camera reposition, and we're ready to go. So let me first explain here what you see in the top left there, the one, is the skill level. We're at skill level one. Changing it to two, you can see there's more monsters and more obstacles on the play area. Three has more. And then there's four. So obviously it gets harder when you get up on the levels. We'll leave it at level one to start. There's three sections to be aware of in this game. The first section where you see that little monster moving around, that's the Wolfman's Den. That is the Wolfman. You need to avoid him by, or you need to get past him by going through one of those walls. When you get to that wall, you press the hammer button here a number of times to break through that wall, and then you enter the labyrinth. In the labyrinth here, you have 16 diamonds you must collect. It's a four by four area. Once you get all 16 diamonds, then you enter Dracula's castle. And then that really means is that these four coffins are opened up for you to get into. Not actually the coffin themselves, but the door or the wall to get to the coffin. And then you have to select the right coffin. If you select the wrong coffin where Dracula's at, he will chase you. So you need to get to a cross to repel him back and then choose another coffin until you find the right one with the treasure. And once you do that, you've completed that first cycle. Does that make sense? Well, if not, let's give this a run and you'll see. <laughs> All right, so there I am. I am the treasure hunter on the top left there, and there is the wolfman waiting for me to come down. So let's see if I can get past him first. All right, now I'm going to bust through this wall with my hammer. All right, now I'm going to get the diamonds here. Those red things are crosses. Come on. Ah, a bat. The red, other red thing is a bat, the bigger one. The little small ones are crosses, as you can see if you look closely. I'm going to wait here. I have one more diamond to get. So I got all the diamonds now. And I'm going to choose a coffin. And I think that's Dracula chasing me. I need to get across. Ugh. I was backing up trying to get across, but he caught me. So I lose one life. Here I go again. I ran right into the wolf man. All right, let's do this again. They're just everywhere. So you can see a lot of stuff's happening. I need to get to a cross to protect me. So I got myself by. Oh, there's Dracula getting me again. Oh, I got a cross. I repelled him back. And let me open up this coffin. Nope, it's Dracula again. See my cross in my hand there? He's gone. I got the treasure. That's the treasure there flashing inside the coffin. I completed that cycle. That was a lot of moving around, quick action. But the hardest part, I think, would probably be where the coffin is. Once you open up a coffin, and obviously it's not the treasure... You need to back off and try to get across to protect yourself before Dracula gets you or the bat that's moving around gets you. Or even the wolfman if he comes across. But that's pretty much the game itself. You need to really move around a lot. Use your hammer to get through the wall as quickly as possible in the first section. Collect every diamond so you can open up the coffin area. And then 
get to a cross when you're getting chased by the bat or by Dracula. Let's try it one more time. Let's see if I can get past this next level. Get my diamonds now. All right, I got all of them. Now I'm going to go in. Oh, there goes Dracula coming after me. I guessed the right one. The second one had the treasure. So I've completed two cycles or two rounds. And my score is 420. And I guess you get the hang of it. I won't keep playing. But it's a pretty cool game. It's challenging, definitely. There's a lot going on. I love the crystal clear look of this. It sounds it sounds great and it looks great. I mean, I think looking at the camera view, it does come across pretty decent. There may be a little bit of reflection from my light, but hopefully not. Let me give you a little bit of a view with the light off completely. So now this is pitch black and I'm going to try to see if I can maneuver around here. And bust the wall on the bottom there. Get the 16 diamonds. There's a little cat and mouse game going on here. I got all the diamonds now, and let's see if I can, I guess the right one again. Look at that. The third coffin happened to be the right one. So look, three rows, I mean three um, cycles completed. My score is 630. I'm really pushing my luck on Halloween. Well, let's just end it right here. Hopefully you get a good idea how this game goes and appreciate the game quality because I think it's a really cool game. It's one of my favorite tabletop games. It's very different, unique and perfect timing for Halloween. So thank you all for taking time and checking this out. This is again, Dracula House by Epic 1982. And until next time, keep your gaming passion from the past alive by living it today. Take care everyone.